thank you very much for joining us this morning. It is the platform, the pinnacle of all discussions right here on Flow 94.9 FM. This is the flow of God's own state. My name is Michael Oni. You're welcome to the platform where we take a critical look at issues as it affects our dear nation, Nigeria, and also as it affects our dear state, Abia State. And of course, uh, the program runs every Monday, every Wednesday, and also every Friday right here on the flow of God's own state. My name is Michael Oni. This morning, we will be doing the analysis of the Central Bank of Nigeria's directive on cryptocurrency transaction in Nigeria. We need to understand this. And of course, after understanding, we need to take some decisions. Of course, uh, you have an idea of what is happening between cryptocurrency traders in Nigeria and the Central Bank of Nigeria. Uh, of course, a lot of them are not happy. We will be talking to um, uh, someone that understands uh, cryptocurrency in Nigeria and of course, uh, a fintech expert also this morning. Well, the Nigerian crypto community recently received a shocker when the Central Bank of Nigeria released a circular warning financial institutions to desist from dealing or facilitating payment of cryptocurrency exchanges. Now, many young Nigerians who engage in crypto are obviously unhappy with such a directive, knowing very well the influence the Apex Bank has on Africa's fast-growing financial ecosystem. Even uh, ever since that circular got leaked uh, uh, to the public, the fintech industry uh, political leaders have been furious at such a decision made by the Nigerian Apex Bank as Bitcoin and CBN were among the top trends on the social media. Of course, you know, uh, many young Nigerians, uh, they go straight to social media to vent their anger, especially when they have uh, issues uh, concerning them. Remember how the NSAS uh, started and now it's about cryptocurrency. But uh, the Central Bank of Nigeria has come out to explain in detail its directive to banks to desist from transacting in and with entities dealing with cryptocurrency. Now, the Central Bank of Nigeria, in a press release dated 7th of February 2021, explained in detail uh, for the reason for its directive to deposit money banks, those are the banks, you know, and other financial institutions to desist from transacting in and with entities dealing in cryptocurrencies. Issuing that statement, the CBN said. It felt the need to provide further justifications about its position to the general public. And that statement, uh, I'm going to quote that statement now. Now, cryptography is a method of encrypting and hiding codes that prevent oversight, accountability, and regulation. While there are a number of cryptocurrencies now in circulation, Bitcoin was the first to be introduced in 2009 and now accounts for about 68% of all cryptocurrencies. And uh, continuation of that statement, as regards to our recent policy pronouncement, it is important to clarify that the CBN circular of February 5 did not place any new restrictions on cryptocurrency, given that all banks in the country had earlier been forbidden through CBN circular dated January 12, 2017, not to use, to hold, to trade, and or transact in cryptocurrencies. They have all made similar pronouncements based on significant risk that transacting in cryptocurrencies portend the risk of loss of investment, money laundering, terrorism, financing, illicit fund inflows, and criminal activities in China, in Canada, in Taiwan, in Indonesia, in Algeria, you know, some of those uh, uh, countries listed according to CBN, end of quote. Now, let's quickly go straight to uh, the conversation this morning. I have joining me in the studio a concerned Nigerian uh, behind the scene, I will call him an aggrieved. <laughs> I call him an aggrieved <laughs> Nigerian. Anyways, uh, he understands uh, cryptocurrency very well. He, uh, at some point, he has been dealing uh, with cryptocurrency. And of course, a friend of the house, uh, a colleague also, uh, Ofeno Emmanuel. Good morning to you, Emmanuel Ofeno, rather. Good morning to you. Good morning. Oh, good, good to, morning to you. Good to have you uh, on, on the platform. But, uh, Thank you so of much. Course, uh, later on this morning, we will be speaking to a financial expert also, mm. uh, John Sinchuku, uh, the CEO of Kauri's Asset Management. He will help us to understand uh, this uh, cryptocurrency dealings. And of course, I think we should take him. We have him on the line now. He's joining us uh, virtually. Uh, Sir Johnson, good morning to you. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Uh, thank you very much uh, for joining us. Now, let's quickly go straight to the business of the day. Now, we're talking about cryptocurrency. That ban uh, by the Central Bank of Nigeria on cryptocurrency trading using the banks and also other financial institutions. Is it a step in the right direction, Sir Johnson? 
Well, I think the answer is not as simplistic as to say it's a step in the right direction or, or not. Uh, we, for, we need to understand the perspective from which uh, the central bank uh, uh, approach the issue, as well as understand the feelings and uh, the direction of technology for us to arrive at what is the most optimal decision that could have to be taken. Okay. Uh, you, have, you have to recognize the fact that central bank is worried that uh, cryptocurrency could impeach on its financial role as uh, and uh, to maintain financial system stability mm -hmm. because as you know any currency will ultimately intermingle with other currencies so uh, if uh, cryptocurrency continues to grow it will eventually assume a store of value assume a means of exchange and those things will uh, interfere with the primary roles of the central bank so that is the underlying reason why the central bank took the action in addition to the fact that the central bank is worried that a parallel means of exchange could be a means to fund uh, criminal or unethical activities like drugs, uh, terrorism, and what have you. So that's the perspective of the central bank. But okay. on the other side, on the other side, hmm. you also have to recognize that technology is advancing. Uh, whether we like it or not, uh, we have to accept that money or the method what, or what we call money is going to transform remember that we used to have uh what they call the gold uh, reserve where uh, money is issued we are backed by gold as a reserve today we have fair money that's not backed by anything that is backed by only the good faith mm. of the country that issued them so in likewise we should expect that technology could bring in a third form of money which is digital money Okay. Uh, for uh, me. Uh, ju ju just a moment now. I, I would like to cut cut in here. Uh, uh, for those joining, uh, they might be having it difficult uh, for some persons to understand cryptocurrency itself. I would like you to educate us on cryptocurrency before we delve into some of those issues surrounding the banning of cryptocurrency. Uh, just for for the sake of those that do not uh, have an idea about our cryptocurrency, Sir Johnson. Okay, cryptocurrencies are digital or virtual or electronic monies. Uh, that are created and used as a means of exchange. They are not physical money. They are not paper money, like what I call fiat money. Uh, uh, they are electronic uh, means of payment and now beginning to act as a store of value. They are uh, what I call digital. I'm sure most people understand what digital is or electronic. They are virtual in the sense that there is no physical nature of those currencies. They actually based on what amount you have in your wallet which is how many units mm. of those digits you have in your wallet and your wallet is like a pulse it's also a virtual pulse that you hold so if you have a large quantity of these uh, virtual units in your uh, portfolio in your wallet which is basically your uh, call it your balance then you can transfer it to somebody else to buy goods. Interesting. Or, now, 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 it brings to the next question. Why many young Nigerians are, are trading, are engaging in cryptocurrency? Uh, because they were, obviously, they were, they were the most unhappy set of uh, persons after that directive. Now, the big question is, how are they making profit from trading cryptocurrency? Okay, uh, let's start from the first part of your question. Mm. Why are so many young Nigerians Embracing. As you know, we have a very high rate of unemployment in the country. Uh, if you add unemployment and underemployment of people in their youthful age, we approach something like to between the above fifty percent of our youth that are unemployed, about fifty three percent of our youth that are either unemployed or underemployed. That's one. You have a reasonable percentage of these young people who are well educated, who have who are graduates. Uh, three, that young people are always the early adopters of the advancement in technology. They are the people who are ready to explore. They are the people who have inquisitive mind, who are going to ask questions, who are going to look at new inventions and try to use them. So it's just in the nature of youthfulness that younger people will adopt a new advancement technology ahead of the elderly people. And uh, because we have uh, more than 42% of our population are within the ages of 14 and 24 years. So that is more than 80 million Nigerians in that age bracket. And that's why you are seeing a lot of young people uh, adopting that. Just the way they are adopting other means of other technology that mm. uh, Okay. Then the second aspect of it, where are they the one that are most, how are they making money from it? Because 
every currency is can also serve as a commodity. Commodity simply means their prices could change. And because cryptocurrency also serving as a commodity uh, in addition to serving as a means of payment and a store of value, changes in price. And uh, interestingly, its flood with price fluctuation is some uh, is more intense than the price flu- the pro- fluctuation in other currencies. So young Nigerians take position on cryptocurrencies that they think the price are low and then they sell when the price go up and then they lock in their profit. So a lot of them have been making money from uh, buying and selling cryptocurrencies and that's why they, they are most affected. But the key thing is that there is opportunity for to speculate on price movement of crypt- cryptocurrencies. So, and if you sp- speculate wisely, you can actually make profit from it. With, with your with your explanation this morning, Sir Johnson, it means engaging in cryptocurrency transaction is legal yes there's nothing illegal about it oh, okay. the central bank has not said it's illegal remember that even security research commission has considered it as one of the uh, acceptable securities that is going to regulate interesting so why the problem why why the banning rather by the federal government by the central bank of nigeria saying that uh, we do not encourage financial institutions to trade to even trade because i understand some sources are saying that even banks they do make profit uh, from trading uh, uh from engaging in their cryptocurrency transaction apart from uh, some of these young nigerians uh, uh making uh, some uh, earning their living uh, through uh, transaction through cryptocurrency transactions Okay, you know, uh, in the earlier comments I made, I said mm-hmm. the central bank is worried about uh, financial system stability. Among the things to consider when you talk of financial system stability, that if because of the wide duration duration in the price of cryptocurrency, if many Nigerians are trading it and they lose money, it could affect their savings, affect their well-being, and affect the financial system because losses will occur. Mm-hmm. Secondly, if a lot of Nigerians are converting their assets, their naira assets, into digital currencies. It could affect the reserve of the central bank and affect financial system stability. Uh, so two things: the central bank is worried that uh, players in that market may lose money yeah. and lose huge amount of money. And it's a duty of the regulator, financial system regulator, including the central bank, to uh, um, to warn people against going into activity they consider as risky. Okay. So that's one fa- one factor. Um, so what? And again, I also must emphasize this: the central bank did not say it has banned trading in cryptocurrency it's only said that financial institutions should not provide avenues platforms for people to trade in cryptocurrency because it considers those uh, trades as of high risk interesting now the big question here uh, san johnson is that uh, uh, that ban on financial institution uh, uh, institutions in the country is anti people that's a big question many young nigerians are asking and they are saying since it is legal, why can't uh, CBN say, well, it's we should incorporate it into our financial system in the country and find a way and uh, find a way of taxing these young Nigerians uh, concerning uh, uh, cryptocurrency transactions? Well, what I would say with respect to that is that um, my take is that in the long, medium to long term, mm. not just Nigeria Central Bank globally financial institutions regulators will find a way of accommodating cryptocurrencies like i said once you have an investment in technology you can wish it away you just have to find ways of working ways of working with it i do not think the intention of the central bank is to hurt the uh, nigerian public uh, so as to say it was anti anti people but what i think is that the central bank is taking measures mm. uh, or reacting to advancement in the technology that is, is yet to have a full understanding of. And not just the central bank is struggling to have a full understanding of digital currencies. A lot of central banks are also uh, contending with the uh, unknown factors of cryptocurrencies, including the creation point and the use of digital uh, assets or digital numbers, as well as some uh limitations in the management of the create the person who creates current coins so a lot of issues are still unknown and uh, which is why the central bank said in the meantime to avoid impeding on our financial system stability we're going to take these measures to forestall uh any untoward act but i believe the central bank will carry out further studies and finding ways of controlling uh, integrating uh, cryptocurrencies and building rules that will ensure orderly uh, trade on all those currencies. 
All right. I, I want you to also uh, educate us on uh, tracing those behind the cryptocurrency. In, uh, if you have an account, probably a, a cryptocurrency account has been used for an illegal activity. Uh, is it possible to trace someone uh, behind that particular account? I, I believe it should because each person has a wallet. Each person has a unique identifier. Uh, um, the key thing that by the time you trace where the uh, currencies came from, uh, the, uh, it may have been too late mm. because uh, the deed would have been done. Um, unlike where you have a financial system where if you try to move money to a, source, a suspicious source, the financial institution could stop that movement. Uh, that's contrary to what you have in cryptocurrency where payments would have been made virtually and instantaneously and then if it was meant for a nefarious activity that activity would have been uh, already carried out mm. before you start tracing to find out where the uh, currencies were paid from uh so in the case of financial institutions you can have a prepayment audit what we call prepayment audit where you can vouch for the integrity of the recipient before making the payment unlike what you have in cryptocurrency so they and you also have to be in mind for every increase in speed there is some loss of control okay so the speed the speed with which cryptocurrency transactions are done also entails that there are some loss of control when it comes to uh uh if the activities are illegal all right uh, uh just before i let you go this morning it was uh, reported in some platforms uh, that uh, nigeria nigeria uh, uh, currently ranks uh, number two as, pa- as far as a uh, cryptocurrency transaction is concerned in the world do you think this ban on financial institutions in trading and of course uh, allowing uh, account uh, uh, people with account to transact uh, uh, cryptocurrency do you think it is going to affect uh, the ecosystem in the world well if we are the second if really and truly we are the second largest traders in cryptocurrency if you shut out the second largest trader you are going to have a declining problem it's expected and like i told you the size of nigerian youth population is larger than several countries and larger than the entire population of england mm. it's about the entire population of germany okay that is those within the ages of 14 and 24. so if they are trading actively uh they that number is overwhelming uh and uh, if they are but i also believe that they will find ways to okay. sidestep the, the restriction are, are, there, are there trade. other means of uh, transacting uh uh now that uh, they cannot do it through the financial institutions in nigeria Yes, there's what they call peer-to-peer trades. Uh, so I believe they will, they will resort, most of them will resort to peer-to-peer trades where they do not need to go through uh, the Nigerian financial system or they do not have to cash out their, uh, their, their profit. balance uh, yeah, right. yes, okay. uh, through the financial system. All right, uh, Sir Johnson Chuku, I want to really appreciate you for helping us understand uh, the CBN's directive on cryptocurrency transaction this morning on the platform on Flow 94.9 FM. Thank you very much. My pleasure. Uh, sir Johnson is the CEO of Cowries Asset Management Limited. Thank you, Sir Johnson. And uh, he's also from IBS. Now, let's take the other side of the story. A lot of aggrieved Nigerian youths uh, uh, concerning this directive. And uh, I have someone representing them this morning on the program. <laughs> he's going to bear his mind uh, concerning uh, this uh, restriction, especially uh, trading uh, on uh, uh, through the financial institutions. But we'll take a breather. Now, when we return, I will bring in Ofeno, uh, Emmanuel Ofeno uh, to let us in. Why are the Nigerian youth unhappy with this directive uh, by the Central Bank of Nigeria? Then we throw the lines open and what to make of this uh, development in the business sector, in the economy of the country nigeria it is the platform the pinnacle of all discussions right here on the flow of god's own state at flow 94.9 fm we've got conducive and well secured environment for business high-tech video studio a state-of-the-art production studio you can also listen live on www.flow949fm.com and watch our videos on youtube at flow fm tv Flow 94.9 FM, not just radio, but a complete broadcasting house. All right, thank you very much for staying tuned. We're talking about fintech this morning, financial technology, because it's about the digital technology. We're looking at the directive 
by the Central Bank of Nigeria and cryptocurrency transaction in the country. Oh, thank you very much uh, to Sir Johnson once again for helping us uh, understand the directive. Now, I've got uh, Emmanuel Ofeno with me in the studio uh, uh, to do the analysis uh, why a lot of uh, Nigerians are not unhappy. He's a trader himself <laughs> and uh, he deals with uh, cryptocurrency and, of course, uh, uh, and the transaction, uh, buying into the gain when it goes up after buying at a, uh, at a lower rate, according to uh, the Lehman, uh, the Lehman uh, analysis I, I, I know concerning cryptocurrency. Anyways, uh, don't forget we are live on Facebook. Anyways, uh, we are on www.facebook.com forward slash flow 949 FM. You can watch what is happening live on our Facebook page and also uh, drop your comments on our Facebook page this morning. I'm going to take your comments as they are coming in. Emmanuel, mm-hmm. let's look at this cryptocurrency issue. I, uh, I remember that was the first week of February mm-hmm. when the Central Bank of Nigeria, the Nigeria dropped uh, that uh, that uh, directive. You weren't so happy. You went uh, you went to, to the other side of yourself and I like, got so angry and furious. Uh, why? I remember dropping a message on my WhatsApp, uh, WhatsApp uh, <laughs> for me on WhatsApp. So, uh, this is not good. It's anti people and the likes. So why? Why are you angry? Okay. Uh, good morning. Now, uh, one thing many don't know about uh, cryptocurrency is that uh, it is digital money. It's okay. just like uh, you know of other currencies you trade on. Like for instance, there's some persons who buy dollar cheap. And they sell it high some persons buy dollar when it's uh, probably maybe 400 and uh 50 naira per dollar and then uh, they wait and they sell it when it's uh 500 or 480 so when you buy a lot of it you have that quick return um you have one let's say ten thousand us dollar uh, at 450 and then you're selling at 480 you're having 30 uh, Naira times 10,000. Mm. Now you get to see the gain, and then the next thing you go. So it's just that way. Now, why I was really not happy, and uh, speaking the mind of the the people, the young minds, the technical inclined uh, persons out there, is this. Now, before I go there, when dollar, the MasterCard, you know, in Nigeria, you're limited to 100 US dollar a month. That's for, a, international for international transaction, transaction. I'm now aware of that, it, yes. it, when that was put it was a big challenge you want to send money abroad or you want to purchase something abroad bank sends you to black market where so you buy bu- dollar yes so it, you cannot transact you more can, than 100 dollars yes with your uh, with your mastercard, MasterCard. Uh, if you go to the bank you'll be told to go to black market now the bank rate might be 460 naira per dollar but you will never find that in the black market. So let's say you want to buy, you want to spend 1,000 US dollar out there and probably you want to buy at, uh, because before now, people buy at international rates and mm-hmm. sell at the Nigerian rate. Bank rate could be four, uh, 460, international rate could be 380, 400, it depends, you see. So now you have to go to black market to buy 475, 480 to purchase something that is recognized at the international rate which is about 385 390 so who is losing yourself now that thing that was done was a big problem for a lot of persons who de- well, the central bank of nigeria has come out to say it is to strengthen our naira no, the, no, to no, discourage, no. We, we to will discourage uh, you know a lot of persons do you know some companies that they even pay in dollars now they, they pay nigerian expat rates uh, they pay they, they pay people working in the organization even in nigeria in dollar now when so you're being the, the when you're bank paid of nigeria came out and said we're discouraging such the legal tender in the country is the naira and it, it should be strengthened if, if it should be strengthened then they should make the rates to e- equate what is out there now i just gave you an illustration of the first thing central bank did okay now what they have done right now with cryptocurrency it's just like an exact system now you're saying i can't use my naira to purchase bitcoin or any cryptocurrency i will have to go to pair to pair which is assumed as a black market which you would decide to say i choose to sell 500 naira per dollar because the peer-to-peer is not regulated okay so now it's not that we can use a peer-to-peer which is another way of trading but it's frustrating us why because 
I want to use at the rate I'm buying was supposed to be probably 460 naira per dollar, and I want to buy 1,000 US dollar, and the bank is no more supporting me using my fiat currency, the naira, to purchase. I have to go to the black market, pair to pair, an individual to buy at 500, which is recognized at 460. Are you helping the people or not? Now, these, these, these were the opinions that were stated out on social media that the government would have done. Now, Elon Musk, who we all know as the richest man in the world, invested 1.5 billion US dollar. Uh, uh, I think there was um, a circular that was sent by Tesla, Tesla company, in Bitcoin. Elon Musk, if you go to his tweets, he has been tweeting about Dogecoin and so many other things. So people are moving into cryptocurrency. Now, the big question here is uh, uh, the young Nigerians, they are making uh, money, they are making ends means. Uh, it's uh, been helping. Cryptocurrency, it's been helping. But another, pro uh, another issue is, is it being regulated? Now, in the US, we have what we call Crypt the SEC. Cryptocurrency transaction is not regulated in no. the country. It's, is it our fault? Now, in the U.S., we have SEC. Other countries, we have SEC. The Security Exchange Commission. There is the, Security Exchange Commission in Nigeria. Also. Then what have they been doing all this while? Now, if you wanted to, as a government, if you wanted to put a ban on cryptocurrency exchange with the fiat currency, you should have done that since 2016, 2017. And then find an alternative, a way to regulate and then remove the ban. In this modern era where people are much more advanced, you are now coming to tell us that you can't actually give, uh, uh, you guys can't regulate the stuff here, so you have to put a ban yet. And uh, from what uh, info I got to, they're trying to strengthen the currency. Strengthen the currency and in course of that, dealing with the okay. people out now, there. Now, let's look at it this from the angle of uh, the Central Bank of Nigeria again. Okay. The CBN might be worried about the illicit flows of cash and the seeming ability of cryptocurrencies to travel in and out of nigeria unannounced and untaxed now the question i have to ask to push into this is uh, before the advent of cryptocurrency has money not been illegally moved in and out what have they done to curtail it if they've done anything to curtail it, they should do the same. They should have started the process a long time ago. It's like trying to teach a child how to wash his clothes at the age of 18. When you would have done that at a very tender age. We should be in the forefront amongst other countries who are now... They, they have Bitcoin ATM cards and machines. Uh, uh, in other countries, people are transacting. What were we doing when people were upgrading? What were the CBN people doing? That's the question the right, people are asking. Let, let me. Get, I'm, I'm going to return to you this morning. Very interesting conversation. We to, uh, we're talking business and economy this morning as far as cryptocurrency transactions in Nigeria is concerned, especially as we're doing the analysis of that directive by the Central Bank of Nigeria concerning cryptocurrency transactions in the country. Uh, the lines are very much open. Zero eight zero eight one eight two six nine four nine or zero eight one one six zero five two nine four nine also drop messages uh, both on our facebook page and of course at uh, the uh, uh, uh traditional sms zero nine zero six five one zero eight two eight nine we have a thread on facebook and in fact the visuals of what is happening in the studio uh on our facebook page flow 949 fm hello good morning to you good morning michael you're welcome good morning Good morning, Mr. Manuel. Good morning to you. Who say man knows I'm calling from Omaya? All right. I can see, uh, if you get dog, you just won't kill your dog. You go just look for, dog will not do anything. You go just look for one bad name. Come tell people, say, yeah, you keep your food for our dog, come put mad. Not the same food where they feed the dog with. Now, what did federal government do for this crypto farm, um, um, currency? You can't tell me that these things have not been in existence before they came into power. Now you want to stop it? You told you told you are telling Nigerians you are telling Nigeria that is going is is moralizing the strength of Naira. How much is Naira when you took over from 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 from, from the past administration? All these things are just are because of 2023. We all know and tell you that the policies that they are making are affecting them and the people, the young youth that are into this business are. Are eager and ready to sponsor any candidate or to sponsor to change the bad government of the day, to sponsor to 
kick against the police, bad policies that they are making. That's why they came up with this kind of solution. Telling us that there is this and that, is this and that. All right, quickly, wrap up yourself. Let's get Without even giving a warning. Uh, to, to stop. Yesterday, somebody you. was trying to open his account. They stopped that in that letting accounts. Uh, making accounts of this uh, currency, uh, you can you can you try and try to do open. Nah, nah, who's the man? No, day. thank you for your contribution. Hello, good morning to you. Hello, good morning, Mike. You're welcome. My name is Joseph, and I'm calling from Marsh. All right, you're welcome, Mr. Joseph. You see, uh, this country sometimes we we don't even know what the government wants from the people. They don't give the youth jobs. They don't create an enabling environment for people to drive on business. We have people with different ideas to come up and then the government, the city and itself, they don't create any enabling environment. And then when we have a small avenue for people to drive and survive with their hard earned money, they wake up one morning and they put one useless law and tell you it's over. Now, they trap people money into the hands of those which these people are investing their money into. As I speak with you today, people invested so much, drew their money from the banking sector and invest so much on digital currency. And right now, the federal government woke up one morning and trapped everybody's money into small, small, um, 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 forex traders. There are so many people who contributed an end percentage in it. As I speak with you, none of them, they are crying because all those forex houses that were doing all this small, small business to give, give these people uh, right, back their quick, percentage quickly, in investing. Uh... I've closed down and these people can't get their money. Do you understand what I mean? I'm getting if the you. Government woke up, if the government woke up one day and said, on the 16th or on the 18th, on the 19th, or the 20th, or the 40th, or so and so on, you people that have invested, cryptocurrency uh, uh, will be no more. People will find a way to get their money back. Uh, all right. It's just so, like what happened in NBA. Okay, thank you for your people contribution. People have invested their money and they have stolen all the money from the government. Let, let, let's move on. Let's move on to our next caller. Hello, good morning. Good morning, Mike. 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 Good if I'm to dive into the Western Union market, I have an uncle who is over, he's at um, Texas. And last year, they were unable to use their Western Union app, saying that the federal government passed a law to that they can't send any money to anybody in Nigeria um, using Western Union. So that means currently now, you can't transact, do any transaction uh, using Western Union. They have that you go to the bank, that every Nigerian must have a domiciliary account, of which you cannot banks will not be um they will not they will not be there now to change the um dollar for you into naira so i don't know what this country is going into because even my younger sister she is even into cryptocurrency and she has been making a whole lot of money with it so please i beg this nigeria they need to we need to know what what they have for the youth actually and how they want us to succeed because there is no work anywhere so that's my own take on it. All right. Uh, thank you very much uh, for your take. Now, uh, back to Emmanuel in the studio. I'm going to throw the lines open once again uh, to get your reactions uh, and, of course, uh, your contributions uh, on the SMS line. L let's take this uh, before I get back to Emmanuel. Hello. Good morning to you. Okay. I think I lost uh, that. On the SMS line, this one says, uh, of the cryptocurrency, uh, let's see. Uh, please and please, I want to tell you people that... Uh, Okay, I didn't get this. It's, uh, it's uh, incomplete. Okay, let's see. We've got more messages. Uh, hello, Mike. Uh, what what is cryptocurrency? I need more explanation. And uh, is it not a legal tender uh, from Councillor Aiko Mezurike from Ekenobi? Uh, we've uh, talked about that. Has been answered by uh, Sir Johnson Chuku of uh, the CEO of Cowries Asset Management Limited. Let's see if this can pull through. Hello, good morning to you. Yes. Hello. Yes. Good morning. Yes. Welcome. Yeah, I am Ada Kroma. All right, you welcome Ada. Yes. Please don't ignore me. I'm very much interested. I want to know how much 
Naira is uh, dollar is to Naira. Please, please. All right, uh, I'm not going to ignore you. Uh, right, I'll, I'll give you that uh, just before the end of the program. Let me confirm uh, so as not to give you uh, figures uh, uh, that are in dispute. Hello, good morning to you. Hello, you're good welcome. Good morning. Yes, good morning. Welcome. Yes, I'm Peter from Good All morning. Right. Yes. Uh, on the contrary, I don't, I, from my own perspective, I don't mm. think. Uh, uh, CBN ta- uh, use the youth as target for this uh, issue. After all, how much will the youth buy and sell in the, in the with this uh, in the market? Mm-hmm. They are they target the target are politicians who who launder money with this through this means. That, that are the main target people who can move millions. I, I should say that you set set target, you know. They should set target so that uh, the young guys can still do what they're doing. They, I know the people they, they have in mind in what they're doing now. It's not the youth. Like everybody keeps saying, how much do we use? How, how many millions can we invest in it? I'm talking about people who can move 500 million out of the country. So I think let them set limits. That's just what I want to say. All right. Uh, thank you very much yeah. for your contribution. Uh, now, the legal tender, Emmanuel, the legal tender in Nigeria yeah. is Naira. And a lot of transactions are going on uh, using cryptocurrency, like uh, the last caller mentioned, mm. using cryptocurrency unchecked, unregulated. How do you expect the federal government to check this when cryptocurrency transactions are not regulated in the country? Now, that's why I asked the same question. Whose fault? Now, I expect the CBN before now, years before now, to have at least visit other financial institutes in uh, other countries and get ideas from them. How do you guys do this? How is it working? Since you don't know how it's done. Now, the Naira is always there, inevitable, because you must always switch. You can use Bitcoin to buy something in the market. You have to convert it back to Naira. So there's there's always the conversion, that transaction between... Okay, now, have they actually stopped it? Now, let's look at it this way. If they are trying to be logical. Okay, cryptocurrency has not been banned. Now, people are doing pair-to-pair. It means I send money to you, you send me cryptocurrency that you have. Has it actually curtailed anything? Is the transaction not still going on? You've just successfully broken out Naira as a means of exchange. Now, let's look at this other uh, aspect of it. They were supposed to have incorporated the bank. The banking system, the mobile app for the bank, was supposed to even be encrypted to at least have the crypto wallet where you can move your money into. So they can also move into the innovation and see how they can also make money from it. With that, you can check. Let's take, for instance, Luno is a mobile app. You will have to do verification, your facial verification, your, uh, um, uh, what call it, driver's license, international passport, even enter your BVN for them to check meet you to be sure that you're not using it for fraudulent act. So they can always regulate. If they suspect that such and so person is moving this amount of money, this, 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 they can always put a way to checkmate it so what if okay you say don't do this give us a platform okay you said forex this forex that all this are uh, this like someone was complaining why not create bring professionals who are into forex trading create a system for the government and then tell us that trading this one is legit we will go into it all right uh, interesting uh, i'm going to take uh, more reaction uh, more reactions uh, for the caller uh, that asked uh, for uh, how much a dollar equals to in uh, equals to a, a naira? Well, it's three hundred and eighty naira uh, seventy-five uh, kobo. That's the official figure from the Central Bank of Nigeria. As it stands now, uh, a United States dollar is trading uh, at uh, three is trading at uh, three hundred and eighty naira seventy-five uh, Nigerian naira. That's uh, the official figure. Let's get more reactions. Hello, good morning to you. Uh, good morning. You're welcome. Good morning. Please, um, I'm Bernard from Oki. All right, Donald. Uh, uh, please, uh, this issue, uh, in 2017, you know, cryptocurrency do have uh, the bull season and the bear season. Mm. So during the bull season, the market goes up. 
and that's what we are experiencing now. So in 2017, that came up, that blue season came up, and prices went up. And I think that was when the CF, CBM made the initial announcement that they want to uh, stop Nigerians from trading on this uh, issue. So, but then, this is now 2017, uh, US SEC, as Secretary of the Exchange Commission, that's when they woke up and began regulating the threat on, uh, on uh, cryptocurrency. So I think that's when CBM should have taken that step. Mm to start regulation on this issue. So, Bitcoin, uh, cryptocurrency trading is a cyclical. It goes up, there's a boost in and the BRC. So, it takes, I think, uh, five years uh, in power. Mm. So, during that time, they should know that at least the boost, another boost will come up. So now, the boost has come up, the prices are going up, they are now passing to agitate again. They are becoming, a, becoming a afraid again. Instead of taking that decision, they should have taken it in 2007 to regulate the market. Mm. I don't know the CDN is uh, the CDN governor himself is not there. Uh, he doesn't have that foresight. And the, the government they say they don't have this thing can contribute a lot to the economy. Others are doing it up. Canada has their own digital currency against their own national currency. They are doing it up. We say they lose. We didn't have safe fights. They know that this is important. So uh, I don't know where they're going. Uh, uh, the CDN right. should reflect. All right. Yeah. Th- thank you very much. Uh, uh, the f- the a particular part of your comment, uh, I love the uh, opinion, is the fact that uh, there was a circular. This circular released um, in, in February wasn't the first one yes. uh, directing the CBN not to, was directed by directing banks and financial institutions in the country uh, not to encourage mm. cryptocurrency transactions. It's dated back as far back as 2017. Yes. Uh, that's uh, our listeners should also uh, know. On the Facebook page, uh, Max Smith Ekombasi says, Good morning, Michael and the guest. One peculiar challenge of Nigerian government is that they are never proactive in most uh, especially vital issues uh, that has the capacity to improve in the Nigeria economy. Hello, good morning to you. Yeah, hello, Michael. Good morning. You're welcome. Good morning. Yeah, this is Stanley. All right, Stanley. Welcome. Well, like one of your callers said, the target is the, is the, are the politicians. They are the ones who can really move money. Uh, Mike uh, Ofeno is talking about pair to pair. You can't do pair to pair with 500 million and above. And then I don't like the way he's talking like CVN. CVN, there's no uh, correct cash, uh, uh, what, do you call it, um, uh, what do you call it, that you're talking about there that the CVN does, don't think that the CVN did not do their uh, research before coming out with what they came out with in 2017. We, we have a peculiar, we have a peculiar uh, crime and we should handle our situations like that. We can't be comparing ourselves to other countries. There's a high risk involved in, in, in what we're talking about here. The fact that you are making gains now does not mean that the CDN doesn't know. They have all the financial advice and what do you call it. You can't think that they don't know what they're talking about. Yeah, I'm getting uh, so, all right. Uh, so uh, I don't like when the, the man is talking about they should have gone to, to seek advice. They, are, they will give you advice. They have all they need. So uh, forget about your, your yourself now and think about the country. And what they're talking about we all know what they're talking about all right and we should learn to take these pains a little for our country to be better we shout to insecurity we shout this but when government takes one move we, we complain i i i am i i deal on this topic but i understand where they're going with it all right thank thank you very much for your contribution uh, emmanuel that's another angle Remember, during the issue of uh, MMM and the likes, those uh, money doubling platforms, the Central Bank of Nigeria warned that Nigerians should not invest just like they are, warning, they are, they are banning financial institutions. Now, don't you think they have an idea of what might happen in the nearest future? I can categorically tell you that for the fact that someone is at that peak doesn't mean he knows it all than you. The people who have been into cryptocurrency since I have, I have known cryptocurrency right from time. They said, let me even bring it 2000 and even 16, 15 and the rest of it. Now, MMM is a different thing. That's called, uh, uh, they, they, they are multi-level marketing uh, system. I, I can tell you that uh, Ponzi scheme. Cryptocurrency is digital money. It's like buying dollar when dollar is 480. 
black market and you wake up in the morning to hear that dollar is now 450 are you not on the loss so if you buy cryptocurrency and then it drops just like the last caller said is it not similar thing we're talking about you say pair to pair is regulated who told you that i can't send you five million naira or 50 million naira into your account for you to send me cryptocurrency do, do you know how many people send money into people's bank just to buy bitcoin do you know how <laughs> All right. See, yeah, we, it's we, not our, solving our anything. Is fast spent. This conversation will definitely continue, and uh, we keep a tab on it. Uh, uh, it's a developing story, and many Nigerians are reacting. Let's see uh, what the CBN will do afterwards, and uh, what you're calling. Uh, you're calling for regulation now, and not uh, outright banning of financial yeah, institutions. Yeah, it should be regulated. Now he right. said that. Now uh, there's uh, something. Please uh, let me just uh, drop uh, this last uh, okay, one. Okay, quickly, now we uh, are not quickly, other yeah. countries. We have our way of doing things, but we adopt some system. You know, it is always good for us to learn and be like people who are on top and not equate ourselves you know when we have problem we're like ah we are nigerians all right, but at the point, we, we, we want to be the like studio. them. We want to really appreciate our callers. We also want to really appreciate our guest, uh, uh, the one in the studio and the guest we spoke to uh, via uh, uh, virtually. That's uh, Sir Johnson Chuku, the CEO of Cowries Assets Management Limited, who helped us uh, to understand cryptocurrency transactions in the country and, of course, helped us in analyzing uh, the directives, uh, the directive by the Central Bank of Nigeria. We also want to appreciate Emmanuel Ofeno for bearing the minds of many young Nigerians the agreeances concerning that directive. Thank you very much for Thank joining so us much. this morning. And many thanks to the producer, Samson Eze, and of course the associate producer, Uyai Jimmy. And of course, uh, many thanks to the guys, those guys uh, behind the visuals you're seeing on our Facebook page, um, Solomon and uh, Stanley. Join me on Friday for another edition of the program, The Platform. My name is Michael Oni.